Hey everyone, it's Chris. I'm really excited to show you an antique tool chest that I just acquired. I collect, refinish, and use a lot of old woodworking tools, so I wanted to have a tool chest to match. And I acquired this chest from the basement of an antique store, and it was full of junk. It had papers and old tools and stuff all through it, and I figured I'd just throw most of them away. But as I started to clean things out, I realized I really had quite a historical find, so I want to show it to you today. Well, here it is. It's a very large chest. It's 40 inches long. Uh, it's 23 inches deep and 21 inches tall. It's painted in olive green. And the back wasn't painted at all. It looks like the paint dripped off from the back. I suppose it was just shoved up against the wall and they just painted it where it stood. The back is actually a dark, dark red color. If you open it up, you'll see there's two saws that are with it. And then there's a whole bunch of these really old postcards, which I'm going to show you in a second. This toolbox has a shelf that basically wedges in here. And it's got three sliding drawers, one with a, a door on it. There's three sliding doors. Then there's quite a few tools at the bottom, including a third saw, and I'm going to show that to you later. Here's the postcards that were in here. The first one says, one thing worse than a quitter is a fellow afraid to begin. The sec second one says, I think... Say cheese, slip on a cake of soap, and come on over. The next one is, to wake up in the morning, would you rather be called or nudged? The next one is, men make a lot of fun of women's weakness for beauty dope, but no woman ever bought hair or store from a bald-headed barber. Words to live by. And the last one is, wet or dry, Merry Christmas. Now I know this tool chest belonged to a Robert H. Erbach because his name is is on or in the toolbox in a couple places. But also there's this postcard. It says Pop bought a radio set but Pop isn't the boss. If you turn it over it's from Atlantic City dated August, night, August 4th 1930 and it says I'm having, having a fine time we'll see you Saturday. It's signed Margaret, and it's to Mr. Robert Erbach, 629 A Street, Sparrows Point, Maryland. So here's the drop-in tray, and this tray is made where it wedges against one side, the outside of the toolbox, and then the other side has this, this board in it with these indentations on it, and this is made just enough so it, so it wedges in there and it doesn't fall through. Now just to be clear, this was all in a big pile in the box and so everything I'm going to show you is how I organized it, how I thought Robert Erbach would have organized it back in the day. So there's some really great instruction manuals in here. The first one is the Consolidated Gas, Electric, Light and Power Company of Baltimore and it's revised to May 1st, 1921. And so this gives um, all kinds of uh, lists and instructions and pictures of how to wire of houses and apartment buildings and I guess row houses. Next this is a first aid manual for miners and it's uh, issued by the government printing office in 1922. And how I know this guy was a handyman is because as you look through these um, all these other folders they're handwritten notes with diagrams, meter readings, um, addresses. Here I'll show you an example here. Here's a list of, of addresses. Uh, work complete 22 to the 26th. Notes. Here he's got labeled empty houses and he has, he's got the address and then whether it's complete or not. I don't know what complete means but I know they're empty houses. Again, more diagrams. And then here's just loose papers that were knocked together. And for example, uh, dated 624.35, straight bar, hours, uh, Allen E. Crook, uh, coil wire, uh, suture bushings, uh, just all kinds of lists of a dates and addresses of things that he fixed. Okay? And then in the front here is, is different locks. 
Um, and keys, some of these go with it. All these different fittings, screws, nuts and bolts. Um, something here says return to the Dundalk Company, Dundalk, Maryland. So it's just everything a handyman would need to get his job done. Here's the top sliding shelf with a door on it. And he's got various plumb bobs and string and a punch. In the middle section he's got various wrenches and then um, a box of rasps from the arcade fileworks. And then in the other compartment there's um, a small hand plane, replacement blades, uh, something for setting the saw teeth and some other brackets and other things. So that's the, the top shelf. Here's the second shelf and it's got various chisels, some big screwdrivers, uh, a square, a couple drill bits. Uh, then he's got over here some more cold chisel things, an auger uh, in here. That's where the auger goes and then he's got the the something from the Carabundum Company number 198. Here's the third shelf from the tool chest. It's got a couple vices, some electrical things for fuses. It's got this uh, metal scotch cellophane tape jar and inside of it is a big roll of black electrician's tape that's never been opened. It's got some General Electric miniature lamps. I really like this coke bottle looking uh, flashlight with a couple of their lenses and a harness here. And then it's got some old wiring and cords. Uh, obviously not something we use today but that's what they used back then. Here's what was in the bottom of the toolbox. Some large door hinges, a well-worn leather mallet, pipe wrench. Then in this box which was marked small levels, hinge gauge, He's got some various things uh, in here in terms of he's got the file, he's got a nice brass level, a really small level that you can screw on to something to make sure it's level, some other punches and gauges. Then there's a great cigar box. Uh, it's imported from Cuba. Um, cigars, there's a 50 cent Baltimore County tax and these are 15 cent cigars, admiration. And um, these have various punches in it for cardboard and paper and there's still some of the cardboard left over. Not sure what he was punching out. And in this small metal box he's got a leather pouch and it's full of punches. So this is Greenlee number 736, 735 Knockout Punches Rockford, Illinois and here's all the punches. Some of them are still in the box. He's got a small wooden plane. Now the plane is stamped all over it. CF Broll. Um, I imagine this is a lot older than the toolbox itself. It's an Ohio plane. He's got various cold chisels. He's got a pipe threading machine here. Pops right on and off. Um, he's got a couple of what I call poor man's tools. So basically this could be used to get angles and move angles from, from place to place as you needed them. And this is what I call poor man's tape measure. And this is clearly marked Robert H. Erbach on here. And then basically you take this apart and on this end you'll see there's some numbers 31 through 36. So you take this and you attach it on this side and then you can get various measurements and transfer the measurements as you need them. And lastly, there's this big hand drill. And basically this was used, you'd bolt it to something, I believe, to get a nice square, true um, hole into the wall if you want to put a door in or something. And this actually uh, has a patent date on it. I don't know how this actually is, but this is uh, patented October 20th, 1896. Well, I'm really torn on what to do with this tool chest. I love to use it for my own tools but I feel like it has such great historical value with the old postcards, the simple tools, just everything together, the, the manuals. I just think it's a, it's a great piece of history. Um, so if any of you have any ideas on who might be interested in, in uh, taking this tool chest off my hands for historical purposes, I'd appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it.